Hello fellow Cameronians, I'm Wraith and this is Cody and we're your school captains for 2021. We are honoured to be representing you next year and can't wait to work with every single one of you to improve this already wonderful school. Our life back in Norris is from Castle and the land where we meet today, the Turbo and Jago people. We also like to pay my respects to all elders past, present and future for they hold the memories, hopes and traditions for all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Well, I also like to extend that respect to any Indigenous people present today. Our school has always celebrated sportsmen and women, uh, academic successes, um, life savers, uh, and this week we celebrate um, in the world of equestrian sports. And congratulations to Brooke Aitel, who recently won the state championships under 13 years age group in the equestrian events recently. Hello everyone, we're here today with Brooke Aitel, who recently competed in the uh, inter-school equestrian event. She actually won her 13 year old age championship, um, competing against heaps of people all over Queensland. Um, how long have you been involved with equestrian? Um, I've been horse riding since I was um, for eight years. Wow, that's, that's since I was five years old. That's actually a really long time. Um, so obviously you like horse equestrian. Uh, tell us about your horse. Um, well, my horse is a stock horse. Her name is Decca. Um, her show name is Royale Decadence. She is 14 two hands, which is approximately 1.4 metres. And that's to her shoulders, right? Um, to her wither, which yeah, is okay. like the top bit where the saddle sits. Ah. Um, so with the question, uh, what events do you mainly do? Uh, um, it's mainly sporting. Uh, so that's just basically going fast around the cakes and stuff like that. Some of the events are, there's keyhole, there is diamond flags, mugs and barrels. Uh, I, I'm still in there, yeah. Uh, what's your favourite out of it? Um, my favourite would probably have to be uh, the diamond flag race, which is where you gallop up and grab the top flag and put it back into a bucket and keep going to all the flags are gone. That just sounds really cool. Um, and when are you competing next? Um, in three weeks time. Three weeks time. Uh, well, really good luck for that event and the rest of the event. I uh, hope you keep doing well. Thank you. I'd like to congratulate um, students recently for some of the hardships you've had uh, at the hands of others, uh, the recent uh, uh, so-called bomb hoax that we had all of, everyone out on the Oval uh, last week. Um, I congratulate all of you for the way that you conduct yourself during those assemblies. And um, obviously they're unplanned events and sometimes and always uh, can um, uh, accommodate some of the things that uh, come out from their field. But I say again that to thank um, students and staff for their cooperation during those circumstances. And one thing's for sure is that the world is not without you know, some of its um, you know, troublemakers. But at CAV, we take them in our stride, and quite frankly, it really doesn't bother us in the least. And it actually builds our resilience um, to deal with such things as they occur. Symbols of CAV are really important to us. Um, there are things we take for granted in our daily lives, uh, such as our, uh, our uniform, our school crest, and speaking of which, our school plaque of our school crest used to hang here. So where's Wally? Well, I'd certainly like to know who the Wallys were who came in last weekend and removed our school crest. So if you know or hear something out, out there around the ridges, I'd love to know, and quite frankly, it doesn't bother us. It's going to be replaced. More security next time so it doesn't happen again. I just wonder what people are going to do with a school crest which is about 90 centimetres wide. It's too big for a hubcap and they can't wear it as a hat. So where is it, Wally? Behind the symbols of our school is really a story. Some months ago I spoke with Uncle Ted Williams, one of our Aboriginal elders, who have had a long-standing association with our school. It's also really important for us to continue our process of reconciliation with uh, Indigenous peoples of Australia. We've had a long and proud tradition in our school of making that more than just symbolic. The way we behave, the way we give acknowledgement, recognition, but also the true inclusion of our first Australians. It just seems to be a natural thing to do 
something we all should be doing as a matter of course. In my discussions with Uncle Ted, we talked at length about what we might do to provide more of a tangible evidence of our sincerity of reconciliation. Uncle Ted suggested parts of the school that might be used, say, as a meeting place for everybody. So out of that, we did some refurbishments in our school earlier this year, and B8 is now a reconciliation room. That complements the outdoors yelling circles that were created some years ago. You might notice the large sandstone blocks in the forecourt to the Performing Arts Centre. Those areas were intended as yelling circle areas that everyone can enjoy. Most recently, to celebrate the construction and renovation of that room for that purpose, we decided it would be great if there would be some more symbolic ownership of that space. It's a homage to our Indigenous traditional owners of the land in which we meet every day. Recently, our Indigenous students have had the pleasure of working with two local Indigenous artists to capture their belonging to the Cav Road community. Through having a yarn with and understanding students' vision of their time and connection to their land, Matt and Ambrose are two Indigenous artists that have come up with a beautiful design. This piece, painted for the students of Cavendish Road State High School, was created using key words and colours provided by the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students of our school. It was extremely important for the artists to incorporate as much as they could from their yarn session with the students. From the left are some koala tracks representing the significance of koalas within the area, which still exist in small numbers through White Hill Reserve, not far from the school. And of course, we'd all know we have a family of koalas always in situ in the trees above our heads. The colours used to create the circles represent the Aboriginal flag colours, Torres Strait Islander flag colours, as well as the house colours of our school. The centrepiece, the hands, represents the larger school community and belonging to this community. At the bottom centre and top are the important locally sourced lemon myrtle, which were traditionally used and brewed as tea and a form of medicine. The feet travelling from the centre hands represent the pathways and journeys of the students. Their journey outside of school and through life. Finally, the wallaby tracks on the right of canvas have been included to pay respect to local totems and also who would have been an important food source to traditional owners. Collectively, this piece represents unity, community, inclusivity, growth and journey whilst acknowledging traditional owners of the country and also values and colours that are important to Cab Road State High School. This piece will be displayed in B8 in our meeting room that I just mentioned earlier. It will form part of our school stationery in the near future. And I'll be recommending to our PNC that a portion of this painting under licence from our Indigenous artists be included in our sports uniforms, perhaps a handprint or the symbols that represent Cab Road and the green and white dots. I hope you'll share with me the sentiments that go along with this symbol of unity and connection to land and country for all of us. To our Year 12s, if you log on and uh, view today's uh, uh, assembly video, we wish you all the very best. Week one down of your um, exam block period and external exams. We do wish you all the very best and we're quite sure you're going to do marvellously well and the results will indicate the effort you put in throughout the course of your senior years. So just as Jess and Brandon have left their legacy behind, I look forward to creating our own legacy with Brave for both present and future Cambridians. I look forward to working with the whole Prefect team to make sure that 2021 is just going to be a fun and eventful year for everyone. Hopefully next year we and the Prefects can bring back the Cav Road events we all know and love. We are aiming to get the sports carnivals and community events back up and running. Next year we will be expressing the importance of everyone coming together as a community to ensure it is the most exciting and eventful year for all students. Okay, on this career 
I, we'd like to acknowledge some of our high achieving Japanese students here at Cab Road. We have a lot of very enthusiastic, committed students, some of whom have given up time in the September holidays to attend various courses and workshops run by University of Queensland. We also have students who made the effort to participate in the Cavendish Road Japanese Speech Competition. The place winners in this competition then forwarded their entries to the online Modern Language Teachers Association of Queensland Modern Languages Speech Competition. So today we'd like to present some certificates and congratulate these students for their fine efforts. So let's get started. Okay, first we have a certificate of participation in the University of Queensland 2020 Global Competency and Student Leadership Workshop, which was attended by Megan Smith in Year 10. Megan has also completed the University of Queensland Institute of Modern Languages Language Enrichment course during the school holidays. So, Megan. Also completing, completing the University of Queensland IML course is Jessica Hood in Year 11. Camilla Lopez Brico in Year 9. And also in Year 9, students who completed the IML course are Khadija Abdi, Nira Putra, Anna Bear, as well. So those students gave up their holiday time and we'd just like to congratulate them. So, and Nira and Khadija will join us again for the speech competition results also. So we have our prize winners for the Japanese speech competition held here at Cavendish Road. In first place in Year 7 we have Natasha Rook. <laughs> in second place we have Alicia Yin. In third place, we have Kara Callahan. In fourth place, we have Delilah Smart. <laughs> Alright, next we have our Year 8 prize winners. First place in Year 8 was Amy Lee. And second place in year eight was Chloe Elder Adams something else. So year nine was our most enthusiastic year level. In first place in year nine we had Khadija Abdi. In second place in year nine, we had Shabri Palmer. <laughs> in third place in year nine, we had Alice Rolston. In fourth place in year nine, we had Rakra Sahasi. And for participation in Year 9, we had Leo Taylor. Nira Putra. James Boland. And we also had Anna 
pair participated in the competition, but she can't be with us today. And then finally, in year 10, we had in first place Sophie Dark. And in third place, Tati Pascal. So we were very pleased to see the enthusiasm of these students. In Japanese, we offer the opportunity to get involved in many competitions, to apply for scholarships, for trips overseas, to apply for courses offered by the University of Queensland and other education bodies. So we really want to encourage you to get involved, put your name down and give it a go and make the most of the opportunities that studying Japanese at Cavendish Road can bring you. G'day guys, Zach and Levi here with this week's Sport Report. Recently over the last couple of weeks we've had a basketball tournament between the Year 11s and 10s. Here's how it went. So in the first game, Year 11s pulled away with the first victory of about 7 points over the Year 10s. In the second game it was much closer but the Year 10s pulled away to tie the series one all. In the third game it was nail bitingly close but the Year 11s pulled away by 2 points to win 37 to 35. Well done Year 11s. Good morning Cab Road, my name is Mr Rudder, I'm in charge of AFL here at Cab Road. Just want to let you know that next Wednesday, the 11th of November, our Open Boys and Open Girls will be playing AFL games against Carmel College. The girls game starts at 4, the boys game starts at 5.30 and it would be great to see as many of you down, there, down at the game as possible. You can come down, you don't need to worry about restrictions, you just need to sign in at the game. We want to get as many people there as possible to have the green machine rocking and rolling. These kids have been training now for upwards of two terms, training once a week. They put in a tremendous amount of work and it'd be great to see so many people down there supporting them. So next Wednesday, the 11th of November, Alex Hills AFL Club. Game starts at four, wear your cab colours and get down to support them. Go Cav. Hi, I'm Annalise and this is Carson. Awesome. We're your 2021 Art Prefects. We hope you had a chance to come in and take a look at um, the lovely artwork presented by the senior students of Cav Road. But if you didn't, here's another look at the artworks that they've created.
something I broke But I had a share in the day you still left We were walking fields of gold We were walking fields of gold Make sure to come down and show your support to all the great teams. achieving your goals is one of the most rewarding feelings. Yeah. Especially for the end of this term, I encourage you all to do something called pre-reflection. Pre-reflection is where you put yourself in the future, uh, possibly at the end of the school holidays, where you think back to what you've achieved during the term. Think about the different scenarios and how you would feel in each situation. Consider the feeling of achieving your goals after putting in all the hard work and effort for the term. So. As the workload intensifies, it's very important to think back about those feelings and consider how good you would feel. So 2020 was crazy and 2021 may be similar, but we can promise that we're going to give it our best shot to make it great. And remember, if anyone has any concerns or ideas, you can always come and talk to us.